All right, for now, thank you very much from West Jerusalem, Harry Fawcett. Well, Phyllis Bennis is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies, and she joins me over Skype from Washington. And, Phyllis, we, there is a great deal we don't know about what has taken place in Gaza. Um, Israeli incursions, I mean, perhaps uh, Israeli forces advancing into the Strip um, it, just a little way isn't necessarily an unusual thing, but there are um, some unusual aspects to this particular raid because you, you have special forces going into the city of Khan Yunus um, and they appear to have targeted senior members of Hamas's military wing. Um, very, very difficult to know what precisely triggered something like this, but what is your feeling, your sense of why it might have happened now? Well, you know, one way to look at this is to recognize that history is determined by when you start the clock. So we could certainly say what convinced the Israelis to move now, but then the question would always be, well, what happened? What did the Israeli occupation forces do to make that happen, whatever it was that they were responding to. So I think looking at it as a cycle misses the reality here. This is an indication that despite the pullout of settlers and the redeployment of Israeli soldiers out of the territory of Gaza to instead be in a, in a surrounding position where they are besieging Gaza since 2006, well, 2005 for the uh, for, for the pullout, and then 2006, when they began to surround and besiege the Strip, you have the continuation of occupation. It's a different kind of occupation than you have in the West Bank. But the fact that they can and do on occasion, as you said, this is not an unusual thing for Israeli special forces to go into the Strip to operate with what they assume will be impunity in the Strip, is an example of this continuation of occupation. Gaza remains an occupied territory. It is not allowed to engage with the rest of the occupied Palestinian territory, the West Bank and occupied East Jerusalem. It is still under siege despite the temporary uh, small shifts that we saw just in the last couple of weeks of allowing in some cash, some fuel, uh, and some truckloads of food. It still remains besieged in the sense of complete Israeli control. That has not changed. And I think in this context, looking at what, what we do know, which is that there were Israeli soldiers operating inside Gazan territory. Uh, we don't know the details. We don't know exactly who they were. We don't know exactly what, the, uh, what their goal was, was their original goal, the assassination. That would be consistent with what Israeli policy has done both in Gaza, other parts of the occupied territory, and indeed internationally. It makes for good partnerships, if you will, between, for example, Israel and Saudi Arabia. Both have been known to carry out uh, to carry out assassinations of critics of various sorts in other countries, as well as in their own territory. So I think we're dealing here with a continual reality of occupation of Gaza. And if we're looking at this in the context of what the United States thinks they're going to be able to do with the so-called deal of the century, something that, that uh, Jared Kushner is allegedly trying to negotiate with the support of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia in partnership with Israel, still operating as Israel's lawyer, as one of the U.S. Uh, envoys once described the role of U.S. Uh, State Department officials, that that's the role of the United States to act as Israel's lawyer. They are continuing to do that. It, it again shows that this is not going to work. You can talk about small steps towards quieting the situation, but as long as Gaza remains under occupation and specifically besieged, as long as there is no engagement with civil society, who is in fact leading the protests, not Hamas. Hamas has supported the protests, but they didn't originate with Hamas. They originated from civil society organizations, from trade unions, youth groups, women's organizations, who created the plans for these weekly protests at the wall that have led to such a high number of casualties caused by Israeli sharpshooters, uh, Israeli snipers. We, we can't look at this as something that is a, an actual move to end the crisis in Gaza. Gaza remains in crisis. That's what I think is the one thing that we can be clear about in this situation where we don't yet know a lot of other detail. 
As you say, the, the ha Gaza has been subject to a great deal of pressure through the years. Um, Israel, along with Egypt, has maintained a, a blockade on Gaza in an attempt to weaken Hamas. But, um, Phyllis, it, it's, that, that's not the whole story, is it? Because we have also seen President Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority impose economic sanctions mm -hmm. on the Strip. Uh, they, too, have contributed to a worsening, uh, to a financial collapse and an ever-worsening humanitarian crisis, the fracture between the Palestinians. That's certainly true. That has made everything worse. But I think the reality is that Mahmoud Abbas has very little power in even the West Bank, where he is nominally in control, despite his official term having expired years ago. Uh, but the, the, the distinction or the, the, the fighting between the factions in Palestinian leadership, between Hamas being in control in Gaza, in, in Gaza and uh, Fatah, or the Palestinian Authority, ostensibly being in control in the West Bank, uh, that's, not the real, that's not where the real power lies. The real power still lies with the Israeli occupation and, of course, with the role of Egypt uh, maintaining the closure of the Rafah crossing into Gaza, so helping this process of besieging Gaza, the siege of Gaza that has gone on, on now for a decade. You know, this is an extraordinary thing. And I think that while it has been exacerbated, it has been made worse uh, by the split between the Palestinian factions, by the imposition of these sanctions, as you say, that's not the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is still the U.S.-backed, U.S.-funded Israeli occupation of Gaza. All right. Well, thank you very much for now, Phyllis Bennis. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. And